<laughs> okay. Uh, oh, is it really not gonna let me use a controller even though it said controller? Nightmare father. <laughs> Shit, I can't use the controller. I got so excited about that and I can't do it. Dad Rector's cut, that's good. Yes, there's a lot of dad puns in this game. <laughs> Rip great news. My keyboard rest. Okay. So. Hmm. I played this on July 1st last. How early, I wonder, is this? Is this the start of the game? Okay, we're gonna go back. We're, uh, should okay, chat. Can I get an answer on this? Should we continue from like when you you guys want to see the say, the whole story? I get a feeling that some of you want to see the whole story here who haven't seen it before, and I'm totally cool to do that if that's what you guys want. Um, I love this game. It's very charming, and I have no problem voice acting it again. Don't cheat yourself out of making a new dad. Okay. <laughs> I don't think there was there a new game plus option there I didn't see it okay ignorant spoon new dad new dad new dad okay new dad I'm blocking some of the dialogue hold on move over here okay what about we just, we sit here? I'm gonna face this. No, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Okay, we'll figure it out. I can access my mouse a bit easier here. Oh God, I just knocked over my chat. Hold on. Okay. This is sleeping noises. <laughs> Dad. <sighs> Dad, wake up. Wake up, pretend to be dead, or five more minutes. Five more minutes. New year, new daddy. <laughs> Hold on, I need to change the name of the stream to that. New year, new daddy. Thank you, break our bones. <laughs> You said that five minutes ago. And also, ten minutes ago. <sighs> I finally open up my eyes and sit up. I'm lying in the middle of the living room, spooning a moving box. I yawn and stretch. Morning, Manda Panda. Aww. Yikes. Dad, breath. Go brush your teeth. Okay. Build that dad. Build that dad. Okay. I don't I don't know what to do for for <laughs> I for for bitch bitch dad sona bitch I don't know what to name my character. <laughs> bitch crime. <laughs> Who does bitch look like? I don't know. I am gonna give myself pink hair, though, if I can. Is this the only pink that I can get? Oh, I'm, I don't have any hair right now. Ugh. <laughs> it's gotta be Goku. <laughs> <laughs> so Chrono then. Okay, hold on. <laughs> yeah, this is great. What is the difference? Just the type of underwear that you have?
Do you ever see your character without without clothes on? <laughs> Shadow. I'm just I'm just picking random shit. If anyone has any suggestions, let me know. This is how we make characters. Like this. Oh, those are good eyes too. <laughs> I like how you can literally be Danny Sex Bang. I know, right? There isn't a randomized button. Uh, I didn't see one. But also, I like this. I like this Goku hairstyle. Goku, but anime. <laughs> Those Kajit daddy eyes. Winter mute. Please don't we call need a Jizargo. character creation expert. We're his casual <laughs> slam jam. Right? Please, please don't call Jizargo Kajit daddy. I think that's disrespectful to him. We're very good friends. <laughs> he's 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 not anyone's daddy. What's the default? I like this. <laughs> Call him the name she hates. What? What? Touch of oblivion. Oh no, Prime is making a daddy now. I feel a disturbance in the force. As if a thousand voices cried out and we're suddenly silenced. You like this daddy? I think he's pretty good. This is, this is bitch crime. No. No, I don't think I'm gonna put any facial hair. Clothing. <laughs> so anime. I feel like this makes him look like too much of a badass. I like this one. <laughs> egg titties. It's called egg nips. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the five o'clock shadow is technically facial hair, so I'm I'm Touch cool with oblivion. this. You know you want those sunny side up nips. <laughs> Egg nips. I like this one though, honestly, if I had to pick one. No, I went with this this was what Dad Sona Crime wore. I wanted I wanna pick a different uh shirt this time. I think I'm gonna go with this. Looking good, Daddy. Name that dad. <laughs> okay, so for those who can't see, I capsed, bitch. Okay, I'm ready to be that dad. Are we ready to be that dad? I think we're ready to be this dad. Be that dad. That Ignorant spoon. Now give him normal hair. No. Ah. I I am the one who could see. <laughs> um, here we go. <laughs> Did you fall asleep packing? I got most of it done, I think. 
Searching around the room, it looks like I did a pretty good job. Every box is sealed except for one. Wait, Straggler. Hmm? What's in it? Looking into the box, I see a bunch of old photos and little photo albums. Yeah. Whoa, I haven't seen these in years. I pull out one of the dusty albums from the top of the pile and we begin looking through it. <laughs> That's the coolest baby I've ever seen. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go with something different than I did last time to see if there's different- There's probably different dialogue options for different things. So... I'm pretty- did I go with the only- did- did he... Which one did I do last time? Okay, I'm gonna go with- I think- I'm pretty sure I did father last time, so let's do- let's try mother this time. Um, the only way your mother and I could get you to stop crying was to put the sunglasses on you. Oh no, it's the same thing actually. Meh. Uh, but whenever we tried to take them off, you'd start crying again. You spent the first two years of your life with sunglasses on. Nice. Halloween, when you were maybe four? <laughs> oh my god, that dragon costume. You couldn't decide between being a princess or a dragon, so you went with both. Princess, dragon. Hmm. Why do I remember crying in that dragon costume? You saw yourself in a mirror and realized you were afraid of dragons. Seeing yourself inside the dragon's mouth was a realization of your greatest fear, I think. Soft four. Confirmed. <laughs> Amanda's biggest fear is soft four. Hmm? Right. Yep. Definitely repress that memory. And this was you in your horse phase. Oh. Dad! I believe you named that plush horse Sir Horsington the Brave. Oh no. I don't think that was his... <sighs> Amanda lunges for the photo, but I quickly snatch it away and hold it above her head with my superior dad arms. Nice try, but this is important blackmail for later down the road. Yeah. Go ahead and try me. I've seen pictures of you in your ska band. Ouch, kid. Ah. Uh. The ska Munist manifesto had a chance back in the day. I look off into the distance and reminisce about that rad horn section. Hey, it's Emma P. Ugh. No, Dad, that's Emma R. I didn't meet Emma P until high school. Honey, I promise you wholeheartedly that I will never stop mixing those two up. <gasps> Dad! Emma R has been my best friend since I was seven. Give it, like, a little bit of effort. Oh, right. Emma P was the one who... Tried to steal people's pets, fired a flaming tennis ball at a police station, or pooped her pants during a sleepover. <sighs> fired a flaming tennis ball at the police station. Lighter fluid, tennis ball, tennis racket, right? Dad, that was you. <laughs> oh, right. I was a wild child. I was six when you did it. Okay, Amanda, I wasn't aiming for the police station. It just happened that there was a police station in the vicinity of where I wanted to hit a flaming tennis ball. Aww. Yeah, I remember you explaining that to the police. They didn't believe me either. Ah. Anyway, I gotta show this to MR later. She'll get a kick out of it. The first photo photography award you ever won. <laughs> yeah, and it got us a $20 gift card to McFridays. Yeah! And uh, then you got food poisoning from the cheesy tostada blasts. I think you mean food poisoning, you know, with the, with the Z. <gasps> Dad! Still can't drive past McFridays without gagging. <laughs> Still proud of you, though. Amanda reaches deep down into the box and pulls out one last photo. Neither of us say a word. We stare at the photo for a long moment. Oh. I finally decide to break the silence. Uh, this was the day you were born. It's uh, kind of a funny story. 
We got into a car accident right there in the hospital parking lot. It wasn't anything big, just a fender bender. But of course, I was freaking out. And the little old lady who crashed into us was freaking out. And I didn't know what to do. But your mother? Oh man. She holds my hand and looks me directly in the eyes. The calmest I've ever seen her. She says, It's okay. It's all gonna be okay. Oh. She was right, you know. I stare at the picture for longer. Maybe too long. I miss her. I can't even imagine what's, what it must be like for Amanda. Ah. She pats me on the back. Oh. Come on, Pops. We gotta finish packing. The moving van won't wait forever. You're right. Amanda and I pile into the car and take one last look at the old house. So many memories here. Hard to believe your mother and I bought this place almost 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Hey, remember when I shattered the front window playing catch? You always had very strong arms. Hey, remember when I shattered the other front window pretending to be a robot who breaks windows? You were a very imaginative child. Hey, remember when I broke the back window play- We get it, Amanda. You break stuff. Eh? And there'll be plenty more stuff for me to break in the new place. Memories to make and stuff to break. Huh. You ready? We sit in silence for a moment. I watched my daughter grow up in this house. It will forever hold a place in my heart. But it stings a little bit to leave it behind. Amanda's just a giant Limp Biscuit fan. <laughs> yep. Good head cannon. Do you guys want the sound in the game turned up? Do I have the option to do that? I feel like it could be a little louder. Uh, volume mixer. That's that. It's max volume. Okay. Sure. Um. I'm ready. The moving band begins to pull away, and I get in the car. Or I get the car into position to, to follow it. Okay. This sounds fine. Okay. I'll just turn it up on my headphones then. Uh, I watch our house. Our old house. Disappear in the rear view min window. Mirror. Rear view mirror. So... So what? Mm -hmm. So sell me on our cool new pad. I clear my throat and do my best cheesy announcer voice. Nestled in beautiful scenic downtown Maple Bay, our new house features... Washer and dryer hookups. Honey, have you ever had dirty clothes? For most of my life, yes. Well, worry about that no longer, as our new place features machinations that will not only clean your clothes, but then dry them directly thereafter. Mm. An upper-class luxury, I fear. The concept of clean clothes is no longer in the hands of the fat cats upstairs, sweetie. Anyway, it's also smaller than our last house. Ah. Cozier, one might argue. Good spin. Yeah. I think it's great. We won't, uh, won't we be closer to a lot of cool stuff that we can walk to so I don't have to waste gas? And, I mean, trying to park downtown is, you know, Amanda. Uh, you know you're gonna have to learn how to parallel park at some point, right? Hmm. Not gonna happen, Pops. I think someone needs to do a three-point turn on their attitude. Huh. I don't know how to do that either. Have you met the neighbors yet? Not yet, but the neighborhood seems pretty quiet. Mm -hmm. So, you won't have to chase any rowdy teens off your lawn. You are the very teen you mock when you say that, honey. Oh. I'm in my last year of high school. I'm practically dust. Yeah, you're a real, um... Okay. Don't you dare. Senior. Hmm. Dad, I know where this is going! Citizen. Huh. I'm just gonna ignore that. Eh? But I won't forget it. So, what's item number one on the new house agenda? 
Well, first we'll need to forge a path through the solid wall of boxes that's blocking the living room. I still have to install the washer and dryer, we need to go grocery shopping... Hmm. Pops. Cool your jets. You have to promise me that we're gonna take a break and explore the neighborhood. Okay, okay. You're right, we'll get some work done and then check the area out. We pull up to the new house and step outside. The lawn is freshly mown, and the for sale sign is still in the yard. He hi ya! And with a swift kick from Amanda, the for sale sign is no more. Nice form, sweet pea. I got a problem with authority! I'm so proud. Eh? Man, all that karate chopping tuckered me out. I could really go for a sandwich. An ice cream sandwich. Sweetie. It's 10 a.m. Uh, I think I did this option last time. Did we even see all the dogs in the park nearby? Do you want to? Do we want to go see the dogs? Let's go see the dogs. Huh. You know it. Thanks for moving us to an area where the dog to person ratio is very high. I only want what's best for you. I hope you're prepared for the frequency at which I interrupt conversations to yell "dog" to rock it way up. I, I mean, you do that a lot. All. Hey, it's a dog. Ah. Wait, false alarm. It was just a funny-shaped rock. Uh, if you want to see real dogs so bad, let's go to that park around the corner. <laughs> she may need glasses, maybe! <laughs> Amanda and I begin a stroll through the neighborhood. I can't believe how beautiful it is outside. Kids are playing in the street, the flowers are in bloom, and the faint smell of a nearby barbecue drifts through the air. This place is nice. Hmm. <laughs> True story, there's a cactus by my apartment that whenever I walk by it at night, I think it's a dog literally every time. Great. Hello, pup time. <laughs> Oh, I love- I love that we have pup time here. For every time we talk about dogs. <laughs> Dog! <laughs> Too nice. I don't trust it. Good eye, honey. You can never be too careful. See that baby in the stroller over there? Government operative. Hmm. We're on to you, baby. We walk for a while and eventually end up at a small park. Toddlers chase each other through the playground and dogs of all shapes and sizes romp through the grass. It's pretty crowded, but Amanda spots a nice empty bench. We start to make our way over to it when... Heads up! Ow. A frisbee suddenly hits me in the face. Woof! A corgi with a neat plaid handkerchief tied around its neck bounds up to me, wa wagging its tail. Uh, hello! Arf, arf! He runs around in a circle and nudges my leg with his nose. Oh, god, this is the cutest dog? Uh, can I help you? Woof, woof! You, you... You definitely could have caught that. A guy in a Hawaiian shirt jogs over to us and takes the frisbee from me. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Best friend alert, yeah, right? You know, frisbees are traditionally caught with your hands, not your face. <laughs> I'll catch it with my teeth next time. Oh, no, I know you meant the dog, yeah. Um, catch- yeah, I don't know what to- <laughs> I'll catch it with my teeth next time. You caught me off guard on this round. Not again. Not ever again. 
That was a lot of uh, eggplants. Hold on. Ugh. Huh. I'm just messing with you. I'm Brian, by the way. I'm a uh, bitch, and this is my daughter, Amanda. I look over at Amanda only to find her sitting on the ground, rubbing the dog's tummy. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Your dog's cool. Uh, old Maxwell sure loves the attention. It's great to see another father and daughter out here on a sunny day. Where's yours? Brian gestures over to a grassy knoll, where a young girl sits on a checkered blanket. She's reading a book bigger than her head. She puts it down and heads over to us. Hey. This is Daisy. She's reading the brothers Karamazov. Karamazov. Her teacher tells me that she has the reading comprehension skills of a high schooler. How old is she? Hey. Ten! She's a precocious little youngster. Hey. Whoa. Hey. My natural dad instincts kick in. I must brag about my child's accomplishments. Okay. This is very good. I saw this last time I played. Oh no, it's happening. Go on, Daisy. Tell him about yourself. Um, I... That's my girl. Amanda, get in there. Okay, okay. <laughs> Bitch is HP 80, Brian's HP 80. Um... Brag. Amanda here just recently won a local photography award. Wow. Congratulations. Brian loses 10 HP. Daisy actually just won a statewide poetry contest. You lose 15 HP. I don't know what brother- I don't know what book that was. I don't know what book that was. I just called him Inuyasha. That's great! <laughs> um, 65, okay. Uh... Daughter? Oh, can't switch daughters. Amanda's your only daughter. <laughs> <sighs> you splash. Spelling bee photo. Fumbling through your phone's browser, you managed to pull up a photo of Amanda winning her 10th grade sp win uh, spelling bee. Wow, congratulations, Amanda. Daisy is getting prepped for her annual spelling bee right now. I hope she learned self-destruct from the nursery. Oh no! <laughs> uh, hopefully this will be her third win in a row. Yikes, you lose 5 HP. Daisy just started a weekly chess club at her elementary school computer lab. She's the president too, of course. Dang! My high school doesn't even have a chess club or a computer lab. You lose 10 HP. Shit. Uh, brag. Last week, unprompted, Amanda helped an old woman with her grocery bags. It's extra powerful. Brian loses 20 HP. And Daisy sold enough candy bars this year to get the top prize, a canoe. We're taking it out next weekend. Oh, sorry. We're taking it out next weekend! How is that even possible? Amanda could barely get one of those sticky hand things. It's extra powerful. You lose 20 HP. Shit. I don't know if we're gonna win this. Uh, Amanda's in all honors classes this semester. Brian loses 10 HP. Oh, really? I'm actually talking to Daisy's teachers about having her skip a grade. Even Amanda kind of bristles at that one. You lose 20 HP. I think we might have lost. No, back. Ah, oh, fuck, I can't go back. You unfurl your wallet to reveal a tiny copy of a drawing of the cornucopia Amanda did in the first grade. Cute. 
It isn't very impressive, but Amanda genuinely appreciates you holding on to it. Brian loses 10 HP. You regain 20 HP. Did I mention Daisy said her first word at 10 months? Daddy. Amanda's was potty. Still cute, but maybe this isn't the time to bring it up. You lose 10 HP. Brag? A few months back, Amanda started volunteering at the homeless shelter in our old neighborhood. Brian loses 10 HP. You don't say. She should talk to Daisy. She actually helped organize a food bank here in Maple, ba in Maple Bay. Yeah, Amanda, I'm sure we could find something for you to do. It's extra powerful. You lose 20 HP. I think we're dead. Dang, he's really got us beat. Boy, it's been such a treat getting to meet you two. Ugh, did he have to add insults to injury by being such a gracious winner? Shit. <laughs> so I take it you guys are new to the neighborhood. We just moved in. Do you live around here? Hey. Yeah, we live in that cul-de-sac down next to the coffee shop. Ah. What a coincidence. That where that's where we live too. Small world. Yeah. Daisy and I are in that little ranch style house on the corner. I know that house. It's just like ours, but slightly bigger and better landscaped. This guy have to outdo me at everything. What a lovely place. Well, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Really nice meeting you guys. You'll have to stop by at some point. Yeah, definitely. Bye. Brian and Daisy walk further into the park with Maxwell happily trotting along in tow. Do you get the feeling that he was trying to one-up us? Hmm? Trying and succeeding. I can't believe that kid's only 10. What was I even doing at her age? Uh, I believe you had a bit of a thing for horses? Shame that didn't pan out. Could have majored in comparative horse studies. It's not too late to minor in horse creative writing. <laughs> too close to the truth, Dad. Ugh. Let us never again speak of the fantastic adventures of Sir Horsington the Brave, an epic in seven parts by Amanda Crime. <laughs> we, laugh, we laugh off the horse epic and walk around in the park a bit more, enjoying the day. Do I want hot chocolate or tea? I'll have hot chocolate. I'd love hot chocolate. <laughs> I'd read that. Comparative horse studies, what is this, Skyrim? <laughs> yes! I'm excited to play some more of that today. Or not today, sorry, on Friday, this week I meant. I was trying to say this week. Um, especially after watching the fucking speedrun earlier. 50cc of horses coming. Very good. Um, how about we go unpack? <laughs> we should head home. I'm gonna need four hours minimum to figure out how to build my new bed, and I'd like to not have to sleep on the floor tonight. I get to work unpacking the various boxes around the living room. A couple of hours pass, and I get some good work done. The washer and dryer, dryer unit is both washing and drying, and we can actually walk through the living room without tripping over boxes. First visitor already? I walk over to the door and open it. Hello. <laughs> a handsome, clean-cut man stands at my door, brandishing a plate of cookies. Uh, he hello? <laughs> yeah. Oh, where are my manners? My name's Joseph. I'm your next-door neighbor. Oh, yes. Hi. I'm Bitch. That's what my name is. Oh. <laughs> I saw the moving van and I thought I'd bring over some cookies. My daughter, Christy, wanted me to let you know she baked them herself. Joseph leans in and whispers. Oh. But between you and me, she just sprinkled in the chocolate chips. Good one. We both share a laugh. Kids, right? All right. Well, cookies, huh? So nice to meet you. Joseph hands her the plate of cookies with a smile. Huh. <laughs> well, thanks for the cookies. <laughs> Amanda disappears with the cookies. Mm. Amanda, come 
Oh, uh, she's gone. That's my daughter. Her name's Amanda. She's a charmer. Mm. Daughters are tough. Sons are also tough. Oh. Children in general are just, uh, tough. I hear that. I mean, they'd have to, there'd have to be something wrong with you to try to raise more than two. Yeah. I have four kids. What have you done? Oh, uh, I meant, uh, <laughs> don't worry. You didn't mean to be rude. Oh no, this is the first neighbor I've met and my social life is already in a tailspin. I wonder if it's too late to move again. Cries in youngest of five. Oh no. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Hey. Is the missus around? No, not anymore. She died. <sighs> oh. Oh. Uh. Mm. I'm sorry for your loss. No. No, it's all right. Wow, this is uncomfortable. We stand there quietly for a moment, acutely aware of how awkward we both made things. Huh? I I'm sorry, can you uh, close the door real quick? Splash of coffee for flavor? Um, Can you put a splash of peppermint schnapps in there? Just a little bit. And some milk. Want that peppermint flavor. <laughs> uh, I look at Joseph quizzically but comply. After a second, I hear a knock on the door. Opening it, I see Joseph standing there with a huge smile. Oh. <laughs> hey, I'm your new neighbor, Joseph. I promise not to talk about your dead spouse this time. I'm throwing a barbecue for the cul-de-sac and I'd love for you to come by and meet the rest of the neighbors in our community. Sorry, in our community. What do you say, pal? Oh. That sounds great. My daughter, Amanda, and I would love to stop by. Also, four kids is a perfectly normal amount of children to have. We shake hands to seal the deal. Hey. Well, neighbor, I'll see you at 3 p.m. sharp on Saturday. Sure thing, neighbor. Joseph starts walking away but stops to think for a second and turns around. Uh. Hey. In all seriousness, raising a kid on your own can't be easy. If you ever need to talk about stuff, I'm the youth minister at a church down the street. Oh, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't really consider myself a, a youth. Nice. Nice. You look pretty young to me, but suit yourself. And with that, Joseph's gone. He seemed nice. Amanda walks back into the living room, crumbs on her face and cookie in hand. That was the smoothest recovery I've ever seen. I should be taking notes. <laughs> See? You're already fitting in great. Where'd those cookies go? Uh. They're gone. I'm sorry. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, they weren't very good. So you ate all of them anyway? <laughs> I guess that makes it break time. Break time! Break time! Actually, that's perfect. <laughs> Let's finish up this conversation. Any ideas? Um, Joseph probably wants his plate back. Okay, we're gonna take a quick break and then we're probably gonna do that. Um, so I will be right back, everyone. Please go and grab some water. Go grab a snack. Go do a stretch. And uh, I'll see you all very soon. Hello, I'm back. Hi. I have hot chocolate. I think it might actually be too hot, though. Not too bad. Also, hello, welcome back, Wintermute. Um, so we're gonna go give the plate back to Joseph, I think. Hmm. Yum. I think we get a ton of good neighbor points if we bring this back. We're gonna be the best neighbors in this whole cul-de-sac. We're gonna kick all the other neighbors' butts. With kindness. Amanda and I step outside. Eh? Shoot. I'm actually not sure which house is his. Hmm? I'd have 
sort of guess is the big one with all the well-groomed blonde children sitting in the yard. Good eye, kid. <laughs> and remember, we need to make a positive first impression here. Keep it light. We walk up to kids and wave. Oh, yes, all the creepy children. <laughs> Here we go. Hey, guys, is your dad around? They all just stare at us blankly. We just wanted to, uh, return this nice plate, and thank you for the cookies. Jeez. These definitely are Joseph's kids. They look exactly like him. It's just dot 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 here. Ah. <laughs> hey there, Toegia. <laughs> Hope you're doing well tonight. Uh, they were really good. Dot dot dot. I mean, they were good. I I heard they were good. I didn't get to eat any. I chuckle nervously. Hmm? Well, okay, uh, we're just gonna set this plate down on the ground real gentle and then back away slowly, right, Dad? Right. That's what we're gonna do. Kids' eyes bore into us as we scurry away. I can feel their gaze on my back even as we approach our house. Hmm? I need something to get my mind off of those carbon copy kids. Uh, grab some coffee or rest my eyes. I feel like it makes more sense to go rest than grab coffee. Hmm. You don't want to do that in the opposite order. Because <laughs> then you're never gonna sleep. <sighs> okay. I need to rest my eyes. Hmm. You've been awake for what? Three hours? And that's three hours too many. As we're walking home, I hear heavy footsteps come up behind us. Bitch! Bro! Hey. I turn around and I'm greeted by a familiar face jogging up to us. Greg? Oh. Bro. Bro. Hmm. Holy. Wow, I haven't seen Craig in forever. Hmm. It's been too long, dude. Also, hold on, my nose is stuffy because I had to sneeze before. I need to blow my nose, so I need to mute myself for a second. Okay. <laughs> um, it's been too long, dude. Yeah, wow, you look great. Bro. <laughs> yeah, I cleaned up my act. Cleaned up his act? Are you kidding me? He's ripped. Amanda, this is my friend Craig. We went to college together. We were roommates for a while, too. <laughs> Amanda, dude, you probably don't remember me, but you're so big now. Hello, and hello, cute baby. Hmm? Ah, oh, thank you. Last time I saw you, I think you were about her size. This is River. Say hi, River. He picks up her tiny wrist and waves it around. River gurgles happily. Are you babysitting? Oh. Nah, dude. River's my kid. Man, it has been a long time. Feels like one minute we're rolling up to exams with bad hangovers, and the next we're both fathers. Where have you been, man? I was working out in California and just relocated the business back to Maple Bay. No kidding. Amanda and I just moved to this side of town. How's Smashley doing? Oh, man. I mean, Ashley. Ashley's her name. I don't know. She actually still goes by Smashley, and, uh, we got divorced last year. Oh, dude. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. It's old news. We take turns taking care of River and the twins. It's all upset. Opacetic. Twins? You have three kids? Hmm. Ain't life something, bro, right? Eggstand Craig is a father of three. Huh? Eggstand Craig? Oh. Oh, huh. Yeah, it was my old college nickname. 
he got it because he did a lot of keg stands. Mm -hmm. It's that thing where you do a handstand on a keg and then drink from the keg. Ah. Right. He was very good at it. Hmm. Ugh, bro, I hate to be that guy, but I'm in the middle of my daily jog and I really gotta keep up my heart rate. Brought River along for, you know, resistance training. You jog daily? I jog... yearly. On January 1st, when I promise myself that I'm going to jog daily for the rest of the year, but give up after 30 minutes and just walk home. Oh. To be fair, jogging fucking sucks. <laughs> well, it's never too late to get back into it, dude. You should join me sometime. <laughs> I don't know. Hey. Come on, it'd be fun. We could go grab breakfast afterwards, catch up. We could do a bro brunch like the good old days. All right, sure. Sounds great. Oh. Great, let's get that going soon. I better get moving. Good to see you guys. Craig gives a little wave, puts his earbuds back in, and jogs off. <laughs> Jogging's legitimately a bad form of exercise, just happens to be the most boring. Yes. It's fucking terrible. I fucking hate. I hate jogging. The worst. I can't believe Craig is ripped and has kids. I'm reeling. Hmm. Why is that? Craig I knew is not fit to be responsible for any living thing, including and especially himself. One time I watched him drink an entire jar of marinara sauce for dinner. <laughs> Yogging. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of running. I have to do it, like, for black belt testing. Whenever that happens next, I have to run 5k, but I'm like... I think that I'm... F I don't know, it's been, it's been a fucking year. <laughs> I usually only have to run, like, once a year, and... I'm usually fine, like, I'm fine to just get right back into it, but I haven't run in, like... a very long time, and I haven't been keeping up with exercise. I'm gonna hate myself when I have to do it again. When I'm able to leave the house. <laughs> uh, okay, Amanda. After he opened up a new jar of marinara sauce, and then he drank it like it was a thing that normal people do. It was unholy. And then I asked him what the hell he was doing, and he said, and I quote, It's basically a smoothie, bro. I mean, technically, he's not wrong? He jogs. He was jogging. Huh. He's, like, a totally different person. Anyway, we better get home. I'll have plenty of time to reflect on how old I feel later. <laughs> running and cardio myth? Yeah. I hate that we have to do that. It's so stupid because we don't do any running any other time of the year, and it's like, surprise, you gotta do a fucking 5k. It, it's, it's bullshit. It's kind of bullshit. Like, we do, like, sprinting, and sprinting is, is fine. Sprinting's fine for, like, endurance and, like, bursts of energy. It helps me out with my fucking exercise-induced asthma, too. But, like, jogging is just... <sighs> the fucking worst. I hate it. Ugh. Amanda and I flop down on the couch. Amanda has to shove some empty boxes out of the way before she can sit. Mm -hmm. Too bad we're gonna be putting my stuff right back into these boxes in a few months. No, don't say that. Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, Dad, it's gonna be okay. I'll be fine. I know, I know. It's just... You're my little girl. It's gonna be weird not having you around. I'll come visit. And I'll text you every day. And I'll take lots of pictures. Makes running painful, uh, but running for cardio in a general sense is not how cardio works. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't imagine. I know, um, I know there's someone else at my, my, uh, Taekwondo studio who also has a metal plate in their leg. Which, which makes things a bit difficult. Um. Man, I'm, I, uh, I can't wait until the pandemic's over. I can't wait to go back and do martial arts again. <laughs> and not online in a Zoom class. Uh, I mean, obviously, I'm a photography major. You promise? Mm -hmm. Of course. Are you gonna be okay by your lonesome? 
Um, oh, come on. I'll be fine. I'll get a dog or something. All right. A dog! Yes. Forget art school. I'll stay for the dog. Is that what it's gonna take? Medium-sized dog, handkerchief around the neck. I get to name it. That's what it'll cost for me to give up on my dreams. I'm a woman of simple wants and needs. Well, a dog is a lot cheaper than college. <laughs> Amanda laughs. Hmm. You mean if? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh... Suddenly, a pile of envelopes slides in through the mail slot. Speaking of college... Amanda darts over to the envelopes and shuffles through them. She pulls one out and throws the rest back onto the floor. Yes. This is from McGowan College of Art and Design. Open it. Hmm. But I'm scared. It's just an envelope. <sighs> yeah, it's just like my entire future. Not a big deal or anything. She takes a deep breath and rips the letter open with her teeth. We have a letter opener, but okay. Hmm. I hold my breath while Amanda's eyes dart back and forth, scanning the letter. What does it say? Uh, The admissions committee has reviewed your application, blah, blah, blah. Um, we... Her face drops. Regret to inform you that we're unable to offer you admission to McGowan College of Art and Design. <gasps> Amanda throws the letter on the coffee table. Oh, sweetie. Aww. It's okay. I kind of saw it coming. I knew I shouldn't have put that experimental stuff in my portfolio. Their admissions officer told me they just want to see portraits or whatever. I pull Amanda in for a big hug. You're an amazing photographer. I know how much work you put into your portfolio. Some other school's gonna want to snatch you up for sure. Huh? Yeah, I I know. It's it's fine. Are you actually fine or are you just saying that? Huh? I'm fine. Really. Her face says the opposite, but I probably shouldn't push her on this. Eh? Oh, and before I forget, Emma R and Emma P are sleeping over tonight. <sighs> so... You need me out of the way because I'm painfully uncool? I would choose more delicate phrasing, but yeah. Well, I'll have you know that I conveniently already have plans for tonight, so you'll have the new place to yourself. Huh. Yeah? What are your plans? Yeah, you have the same- you do have the same daughter every time. Um, quick, think of plans. Uh... <laughs> I'm secretly the mayor of this town. Amanda, the town needs me. I need to perform my mayoral duties. I must don my top hat and wear my monocle so that I may preside over my... mayor stuff. Yeah. I think you're t thinking of the guy from Monopoly? He was a mayor, right? Eh? He was not. Right. I'm just kidding. I'm actually going to, uh... <laughs> I just imagine a scenario where people speed run the game and continually re-roll to get the optimal daughter with the shortest name to make the text boxes disappear faster. <laughs> no, I don't- I don't think that's a- no, I don't think that's a thing. <laughs> I mean, there is an auto-skip option, right? There's also this auto-skip option. I mean, there are game parts of this as well. I wonder if there's- there's probably not a speedrun thing on- on speedrun for this. <laughs> um, do we go out and watch the game or do we go to bed? Let's go out and watch the game? Question mark? Nice. Oh, hold on. I want to check the speedrun categories for this. When this game was described to me, I expected a speed dating game trying to find love. No, yeah, it's no, it's totally not that at all. This game is super fucking emotional. Oh, okay. Yep, those are speedruns. Okay. All dad's route. One hour, 15 minutes.
Wow, okay. This is great. <laughs> Craig Road is fastest, I see. Okay. Nice. Hmm. Which game? <laughs> See what you're doing after you're done with Sonic. <laughs> uh, you know, the game. The one that's on tonight. Aww. The game. On TV. It's somewhere other than here. Eh? Okay, cool. While you do that, I'm gonna go do drugs and commit some light arson with the Emmas. I'm concerned you're hanging with the wrong crowd. Amanda shrugs. I would have expected you guys to be up to white-collar crime by this point. Maybe money laundering at the least. I'm a street rat, Pops. You're kidding about doing drugs and crime, right? <sighs> yes, Dad. Just making sure. Yeah. I give her a pat on the head. Have fun with your sports. Are you being sarcastic? Aww. No, making fun of sports is played out. <laughs> All right, then. I do some light cleaning around the house and decide to clear out right before Amanda's friends arrive. Before I leave, Amanda stops me. Hey, don't forget that you have that meeting with my English teacher tomorrow. Oh, right. Mr. Vega. Yep. Totally remembered. I'll be there. Why is your record player's lid open? I didn't notice that. We literally just moved. I don't know why it wouldn't be closed. There's got to be a lot of dust being kicked up too, right? <sighs> wow, I guess I really didn't think this plan through. I'm not entirely sure where the closest bar is, and Amanda still hasn't shown me how to use the GPS on my phone, so I'm just going to pick a direction and walk in it. Let's go uh, this way. Cool, okay, we're marching. We're marching in the direction of the game. Any game, really. In the distance? Could it be? <coughs> Excuse me. A big burned-out neon sign hangs above a tiny dive bar. Jim and Kim's, huh? Alright, it'll do. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it, Uchi. <laughs> uh, the bar is small and dimly lit. The crack of pool balls sounds in the back as patrons laugh and joke. A string of multicolored Christmas lights hover above the bartender. I can't tell if he's Jim or Kim. I pull a seat up at the bar. What'll it be? One beer, please. Sure thing, boss. The bartender slides me an ice-cold beer. I take a sip and enjoy the refreshing taste. Say, are you Jim or Kim? I'm Neil. Oh. I awkwardly turn my attention to the game, which is playing on one of the TVs on the wall. As luck would have it, my team of preference is not only playing, but is currently in the lead, which is always a good thing. The brightly colored mascot, which is some kind of animal, does cartwheels. I silently cheer on my favorite team, hoping that I don't get into, into, into any confrontational arguments with a fan of the opposing team. Several people in this bar are wearing distinctive colors of the team I dislike, although I believe from their demeanor that, like me, the passion for their team is all in good fun. Hey. A middle-aged woman holding a nearly empty wine glass uh, sidles up to the bar and sits uncomfortably close to me. Hey, sailor. Oh, ho hello. Good to see fresh meat in here. I'm Mary. Come in here often? Oh, no, I actually just moved to this part of town today. I'm bitch, by the way. Ah. <laughs> Are you watching the game? Yeah, my preferred team's in the lead. If they keep this up, they'll win the game with ease. Hey. Oh, I love that team, and also I love that game. I love somebody who knows their way around balls. Getting the impression she's a little drunk. Uh, buy a gala drink. No, she's making me kind of uncomfortable. I'm not gonna buy Mary a drink. Uh, 
maybe some other time? Ugh. Suit yourself, sailor. Mary saunters off, setting her sights on the newest bar patron to enter. I happily watch the game over another beer. The game has gotten close in terms of points, a little too close than what I'm comfortable with. After a particularly skilled player scores a number of points for the other team, putting them in the lead, I hear an affirmative grunt from another man at the bar. Yeah, this is what all sports sounds like to me. <laughs> um, Go team! He sits alone brooding over a beer and keeping an eye on the game. Enjoying the game? I am now that we're winning. Oh, we must be rooting for different teams. Sports is just grunting. I was gonna say this sounds like sports to somebody who hates sports, yeah. Uh in my opinion, my team's far superior. I have to disagree with that. Based upon our win-loss record, I'd say that my team is superior. That's where you're wrong, since as it stands right now, my team is beating yours. The conversation ends there as we both go back to silently rooting for our respective teams. The game is close, with both sides playing their hardest to win, but in the end, my team prevails. Quiet cheers ripple throughout the bar. I raise a respectful glass at the man drinking whiskey. He raises his in response. An unspoken truce is formed between us based on mutual love for the game. He motions to the bartender who pours two glasses of whiskey. The man slides one over to me. The name's Robert. Thanks. I'm bitch. Oh. You must be new here. Mary already hit on you. Yeah. Mm. Robert chuckles. Ah. She's a peach. Well, you pick the best bar in town. As slimy as it is, you'll never find a better spot than Jim's and Kim's. Is there actually a Jim or a Kim that runs this place? Oh. No, that'd be Neil. <laughs> My dad really likes the pa or liked the Patriots. He probably still likes the Patriots. He used to have a jacket that he would wear all the time. It was a Patriots jacket. I don't- so I kind of get the joke? Yeah. <laughs> he always used to- I know that he used to get a lot of flack for that. <laughs> um, Neil waves from across the bar. Hey. Uh, good guy, Neil. Not enough Neils in this world. Uh, okay. You a whiskey fella or a beer fella? Beer, but I'll drink to most things. Oh, I'll drink to- I'll drink most things, not to most things. <sighs> you like shots? Uh... I love shots. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Robert nods to Neil, who serves up two shots of whiskey. He hands one to me. Here's to your health. We take the shots. The whiskey burns going down, but I try my hardest to look tough. Oh. Wait. I think this is what making friends is. Okay, bitch. This guy's out of my friend league, but I think if I play my cards right, we'll be pals in no time. Oh, what do we compliment? I think we, you should... I think the best thing to compliment is this cool leather jacket. You don't want to... You don't want to be like, hey, you look hot. You want to compliment <laughs> something that isn't immediately about their looks, because that's rude. Cool leather jacket. I like your jacket. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Been in my family a long time. Passed down from firstborn to firstborn. Cursed, some would say. Man, this guy's mysterious. And cool. Thanks. Way cooler than I am, at least. Robert signals to the bartender for another round. What are you doing here tonight? Uh... My daughter kicked me out of the house. We're trying to make friends. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about my daughter. I love my daughter. 
My daughter kicked me out of my house. Not like forever. She was having a sleepover with her friends. Oh. Family type, huh? Single dad. Oh. Hmm. He gets up. I... Be right back. Gotta powder my nose. Never seen Robert this talkative. He must like you. Huh. I guess so. Gotta admit that Robert has a gruff charm to him. If a guy like that thinks I'm cool, then I really must be. Robert comes back from the bathroom and grabs his leather jacket. <sighs> I'm gonna go home. You heading my way? Robert and I leave the bar and find ourselves walking in the same direction. So. I live in this cul-de-sac down the way. Does everybody live there? Me too. We just finished unpacking today. Huh. Great place to be. Good neighbors. Well, some of them. Who's that? We get to Robert's house, which is just a few houses away from mine. We stop, and he turns to me. Oh. I don't kiss and tell, bitch. Uh. So are we doing this or what? What? Oh. You know, do you want to come inside or not? A wave of realization rushes over me. I blush. I feel like I should probably say no right now. I don't know which dad I want to date yet. Got the sexy music too. Is Powder My Nose a drug reference? Yeah, is this guy doing coke? <laughs> Do we want to sleep with someone who's doing coke right now? I don't know about that. <laughs> I think I'm gonna say no. No thank you. Uh, I'd better call it a night. Catch you around? Mm. Sure. Okay. I head home. Head buzzing with whiskey. What did he mean by, are we gonna do this or not? Hmm. I plop down on the couch and I'm asleep before I even get the chance to take my shoes off. He's handsome, but he's definitely a fuckboy. Yep. Oh shit. Oh shit, Amanda's fucking thing. Oh no. I wake up to a text from an unknown number. Oh. Brag. God damn it. <laughs> Rise and shine, early bird. Still want to work out? This is Craig, by the way. Holy crap, it's 6 a.m.? Who does 6 a.m. anymore? Without realizing it, I drift right back to sleep. Whoops, must have winked back out. I check my phone again. <laughs> Asleep before I had the chance to take off my shoes. No, it's not normal! Take off your shoes when you enter a house! Oh my god! <laughs> I think this is set in the U.S., so I guess it makes sense. It's normal in the U.S. That's wrong. You should take off your shoes. It's rude. Do not take off your shoes. <laughs> You come to my house, you must take off your shoes. Don't come to my house and have your shoes on. <laughs> I will give you slippers if you need. Or socks. Whoops, must have winked back out. I checked my phone again. Hey bud, still want to get your swole on? I'm ready to tear up the track. Hit me up. Like, extra socks, if you want another pair of socks. I will not wear another person's socks or- You not sli- not slippers? <laughs> really? What if I had, like... I'm talking about not slippers that I wear. Like, if I had slippers that are, like, guest slippers. Yeah, guest slippers. Slippers are the worst, but you would still have your sock. Okay, whatever. Fine. <laughs> I 
Yeah, get slippers. No, you'd wash them. You'd get, like, slippers that you can wash. We have guest slippers at the Taekwondo studio. <laughs> They're like washable slippers. Whatever. Whatever, guys. That is super weird. Really? I don't know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure those slippers we have are like completely washable. Like the ones from Ikea that I have. Loner <laughs> slippers is weird. The, the waiting room gets really cold and they make everyone take their shoes off. You can't enter the, like, the waiting area without taking your shoes off. So they're, they're slippers that you can put on. But everyone's wearing, like, socks. It's, like, for parents, not for, like, people who are going into... Whatever. It's cold out there. You're not allowed to wear your fucking wet shoes into the waiting room. Do they have different sizes? Yeah, they have, like, small and large. Um, no, you can enter the building. There's, like, a room with coats and jackets and shoes. And then as soon as you go into the waiting room, you can't be wearing them. You have to take them off before then. Yeah, there's, like, two different sizes of shoes. Like, small and large. They're just, like, it's not shoes, slippers. And so that your feet don't get cold. It's very cold out there. <laughs> Canada's weird? Okay. Well, I mean, whatever. Just don't wear your shoes. Don't wear your shoes. <laughs> what the heck? No! It's to keep everything clean. It's so that you don't track dirt into the fucking gym. I think, the, I think there's multiple hotels that give slippers to people. Anyway. God, the last thing I want to do right now is work out, but it is Craig. I do want to catch up. We go. Where? Let's go to the gym. Let's get all swole before we go and do this meeting with my daughter's teacher. Yeah, we did get sidetracked. <laughs> We're getting back to the game. <laughs> The shoe rack is in the wait- no, there so there's a waiting- god damn it. There's an office? When you walk into it, it's like a coat room. It's like a, an entire room for coats and shoes. And then there's an office on one side, and then the waiting room on the other side. And then if you go through the waiting room, you get into the gym. So you can only wear the shoes in either the office or the coat room. Not the waiting room. You're not allowed to wear shoes in there. <laughs> that's- that's what it is. Um, brother-in-law from Nigeria is very passionate about the no shoes rule as, as well. Crime is adamant that we are bad people forever having shoes on inside. <laughs> yeah, there's a waiting room and a pre-waiting room. The pre-waiting room is the coat room. It makes perfect sense. <laughs> you don't want to get fucking dirt. That's why you have a barrier between the two rooms. Keeps everything very clean. Very clean, very clean dojang. <laughs> Are there fucking airlocks? No! We have a very clean do- it's very clean. Sounds like a coat thief room. Um, the- uh, literally the office is- is like, can see the coat room the entire time. There are airlocks, yeah, kind of. <laughs> it's very, it's very clean. Like, I've been to other schools and they're not as clean as, as what we have. They take it very seriously. And that was, that was before the pandemic, too. Yeah, wash the floors, like, every, every, like, after every class. But, still, you don't want to track dirt in there in the first place. Water getting under those mats is not fun. There's a room where everyone's walking around with bare feet. I mean, that's any gym! God damn it. Hey, my man. I need a few minutes to wake up, but let's meet in 20. After a few seconds, another text comes in. Sure thing. Meet me at the gym. 
I stretch and my bones creak. I gotta stop falling asleep on the couch. I throw off my blanket and... Hey, wait. I don't remember falling asleep with a blanket. Amanda must have tucked me in after I fell asleep. Bless that child. I reluctantly brush my teeth, throw on the only clothes I own that are even kind of gym appropriate, and head out. The neighborhood is quiet and serene this early in the morning. Birds chirp and the grass is still wet with dew. Surprisingly, the gym is pretty crowded. I spot Craig standing out front, stretching. Of course. He spots me and waves enthusiastically. Oh. Hey, bro. Good morning. Hey, good to see you, man. I'm definitely not as pumped up as he is. Maybe I should have had some coffee before I left. Hmm. You ready to kick some butt? Uh, with your help, I am. I get the feeling this is going to be less of me kicking butt and more the gym kicking my butt. But I can handle it with you here. Oh. Dude, bro, that means a lot. Hey. We head into the gym and I'm immediately intimidated. All of these people look like they could break me in half. And it seems like Craig is friends with all of them? Oh. He high fives and finger guns all the cool jocks in the room. They look like they could and would steal my lunch money to spend on protein shakes. Hmm. How <laughs> many waiting rooms? Shut up! <laughs> probably one! This is probably just one of those gyms where it's like there's no waiting room, it's just an entire. just one room. Daddy swole body, you can do it, bitch. Yeah, let's go, bitch! Come on, bud. Let's warm up. Also, this is set in the U.S., so they're probably all wearing shoes. Outdoor shoes inside. <laughs> we head over to the treadmills and start walking. Okay, I can walk. Walking's good. This is a decent place to be, walking. So, I know we are on, tr on treadmills. Yeah? And those over there are ellipticals. Oh. Very good. What is all this other stuff? Craig laughs. Bro. They might look a little scary, but I guarantee that all of them serve a specific purpose for building muscle mass. No, you have to usually wear non-outdoor shoes. It's not being barefoot. That's not what I'm saying. You can't be wearing outdoor shoes inside your gym. Like, they make you take off your outdoor shoes and put on other shoes. Yeah. You change into, like, other shoes for indoors. Because that's just rude to walk in with outdoor shoes. You're going to get fucking dirt all over everything. And slush. It's dangerous. I watch as a dude in a muscle tee flexes a muscle I didn't know existed on a machine that I think was once used to process grain into flour. What is that? Why is that guy doing that to himself? Hmm. That's a good question, bro. What do you think he's doing? Uh... <laughs> Training to crush people's skulls with his thighs. He's, uh, he's trying to make his thighs so strong that he could crush people's skulls with them. Bro. Yeah, it's pretty much the only reason I work out. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Oh no. Craig is turning up the speed. I better do the same. How, uh... How long have you been doing the buff thing? Mm -hmm. Couple of years. Oh, how about the fact that my my gym has in the, in the um <laughs> my weightlifting gym in the, in the the shower room like the change room has has sandals that you can wear in the shower that are public sandals that get cleaned. <laughs> Is that weird? <laughs> Cuz that's also a thing. <laughs> Bring your own. Yeah. Um, and what do you do when you're not dadding, or working, or buffing? Hmm. Oh. I coach my twin softball team. That still counts as both dadding and buffing. Hmm. Uh, I keep busy. What do you do for fun? Um, I check out my hot bod. I love learning? Does that sound good? 
I try to educate myself about the world around me. I'm like a sponge for knowledge, soaking up all that intellectual content, you know. History, the paranormal, wilderness survival, uh... Aliens? Mostly those things. <laughs> Special shoes. They're just literally sandals. They're like... Tro like sandals with like fucking tropical prints on them or whatever. I think it's just so you don't like slip. Or also so you're not walking like barefoot. Around the change room. So you watch the History Channel too, huh? Yes. Nice. We're jogging now. Oh god, we're jogging now. I look over to Craig, who hasn't even broken a sweat. Um, how is he doing this so effortlessly? I'm dying. I can feel my life force draining through every orifice of my body. Yeah, it's also, yeah, so you don't get warts from the public showers. And also, like, yeah. Like, they have, like, disinfectant by all the, the, the sandals and stuff. Because it's a fucking gym. They have disinfectant, like, literally everywhere. So, like, you just wipe things down before you use them. And wipe things after you're done. <laughs> Just, just, like, don't- you're not, like, putting on stuff that other people have worn and you haven't cleaned it. I don't- like, you've cleaned the stuff. I think it's fine to wear it. Like, <laughs> Um... I look over to Craig, who hasn't even broken a sweat. How's he doing this- oh, yeah, I already read this. How's he doing this so effortlessly? I'm dying. I can feel my life force draining throughout every orifice of my body. Hmm. Hey. Remember when my fish died in college? <sighs> no, I don't like this story. Ugh. Oh my god, is he really bumping up the speed again? I, best, I guess I better do it too. Oh. Oh, this is fast. This is very fast. Oh. And we were at that party, and you vowed to make me feel better? You tell me to create a distraction, so of course I do a sick keg stand and get everyone cheering. And then I, ugh, try to steal a fish from a fish tank at a party with my hands, like an idiot! Hey. And then you drop the fish and it's flopping around and you panic, so you run up to me post keg stand with a dying, dirty fish in your hands and say that you scooped it off the ground- or, sorry, in your hands that you scooped off the ground, and you're yelling at me that we have to leave. Hey. So we're running out of a frat party with a fish and trying to give it mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. And then we get him home and get him into a bowl of water, but the prognosis was grim. And the next day, he is... <sighs> alive and well. Hey. They never did catch the great fish thieves of Grand Ridge U. And they never... <sighs> will! I shoot off the end of the treadmill and crash into the wall. Oof. Jesus, that hurts. Dude! Dude! Bro! Are you okay? Craig offers me a hand and looks me over for injuries. I'm... fantastic. I manage to stand up and rub my back. It doesn't hurt now, but I'm sure it will later. I don't know. You don't have to push yourself like that. Always know your limits. Well, I, I think I might call our gym adventure here. Nice. You sure? Yeah. Oh. Alright, well here, I brought you this. Craig hands me a shaker bottle full of a thick green liquid. I stare at it with what, what must be apparent distaste. Hmm. It's a protein shake, bro. Oh, thank you. He wants me to drink it. Oh boy, here goes. I take a small sip. It's, uh, it's actually delicious. Oh, this is really good. Hey! Good for you, it's my special recipe. I'm pretty proud of it. Hey! Let me know if you ever want to work out again. Maybe we can try running around the neighborhood if treadmills aren't your, uh, speed. No pun intended, bro. Good one. Well, I'm gonna go put some ice on this. Everything. I'll see you around. I live th leave the gym feeling ashamed. Craig used to order delivery from the pizza place across the street on our dorm. Or, a street from, the from our dorm, and now he can run circles around me, literally. Man, I really gotta work on this dad bod. I get home and lie down on the couch. It hurts to move. Oh god, I'm so old. Oh no, I must have fallen asleep. What time is it? 
Shoot, it's 3.55. I'm supposed to be at Amanda's school in five minutes. Ooh. I frantically put on some clean clothes, apply, apply a generous amount of deodorant, and run out the door. Shit, we're gonna be late! No, Amanda! I had arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. I'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully no one will notice. I check my watch and am relieved to see that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 103 or 108? I spot a youth standing at his locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, but do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? The youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavily lined eyes. Ugh. Come on, kid, I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know, have you tried the exit? Okay, wise guy, are you gonna help me or not? Ugh. Fine, up those stairs and to the left, can't miss them. I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk youth sent me on a wild goose chase. I get back to where that low-rent Ger Gerard Way is standing, fully ready to give him a piece of my mind, when suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Oh. Lucian. <laughs> Don't you have a third uh, period to get to? Ugh, fine, Mr. Vega. Oh. Wow. Now I'm officially ten minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We're not cool. Hmm. <laughs> you must be bitch. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Hmm? Mr. Vega leads me in, and I take a seat in one of the comically small students' desks in the back. I might get stuck in this. Hmm. Alright, where were we? Now, who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator? Ooh! <laughs> Have you ever played a non-horny game? Oh my god. Hold on, also a rate! Oh my god, hold on! Hello! FML4E! <coughs> Excuse me! Hello, thank you so much for the raid. I really appreciate that. Can I please get a shout out? Um, and also, thank you, Casual Slam Jam, for subbing for fucking 23 months. That's a long goddamn time. Uh, have you ever played a non horny game? Also, I love how it blurred out horny, so it looked like. I thought you were saying, have you ever played a non fuck game? <laughs> um, uh, 10, 14. Final Fantasy 14, nice. Every game can be horny if you try hard enough. Exactly. So I will never not play a non uh, a non horny game. Anyway, thank you so much for the raid. Thanks for bringing your community over here. I hope you had a wonderful stream. Uh, we're playing some Dream Daddy right now. Um, it's a very good game. Very good game. Uh, and not at all what you think it might be. <laughs> Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy is a horny series. <sighs> All right, now where were we? Who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator in J.D. Salinger's Catcher in the Rye? Um. Yes, Colin? Colin stands up and does a thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. Hmm. The whole class erupts in laughter. Oh. All right. All right, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. Hmm? Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that... The bell for the period... Uh, the bell for the end of the period rings. All the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. What? Bunny people? Oh my god. I don't know much about Final Fantasy, but... <laughs> if there's bunny people, that's probably a horny game. <laughs> Remember to do the reading and answer the response questions on page 194 in your textbook. Nobody's listening. Mm -hmm. Or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me in size. Mm -hmm. Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? Eh. Both, you know. Budget cuts. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Thanks so much for coming in. No problem. Uh, Mr. Vega. Hmm. Please, call me Hugo. Hmm. I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but I'm sure... Uh, you know that Amanda's a very bright student, and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? Hmm. Amanda's never been the most, uh, in engaged student. But I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I'd normally chalk this up to senioritis, but... This is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. It hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. Hmm. Just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? Um... She has a tendency to bottle things up, she's fine, or we just moved. We just moved, but I think we literally just moved yesterday. She could be upset- she could- probably was upset about having to move out of her childhood house. Bring fit reps. Oh man, okay, hold on. Hold on, yeah, let's- let's work out our- our body here. Bring fit reps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Dream Daddy requires squeezing your cock. Yeah, my captains of crush. Uh, I haven't done this in a while. It's gonna be bad. Oh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two. Three, four, five. Ooh. <laughs> Thank you for that, Winter. Mark is complete. There we go. Um, let's say we just moved. Well, I mean, we just moved recently, but it was only to the other side of town, and Amanda was more excited about it than I was. Hmm? See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal and would appreciate your guidance. If she keeps heading down this road. Hmm. I know how important art school is to her, and I would hate to see her miss out on scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Oh. Anytime. On my way out, I stop, thinking for a moment. I turn to Hugo. Hey, Hugo. Ah. Yeah? They ever catch that rye? Hmm? Yes. I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force for positivity in my life, especially after we lost her mother. Amanda must be done with classes for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home. Maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. Ah. I pull up to the carpool and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. Yeah. So, did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I actually just gossiped about our celebrity crushes. So you talked about Mario Batali the whole time? It was a very productive meeting. Eh? I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. Uh... I know we went to the food court last time. I'm gonna I'm gonna put the option that we can we <laughs> let's make something at home <laughs> in true dad fashion. <laughs> cool. Oh, cool. Okay. I think with our powers combined, we could throw together a gourmet meal worthy of the Food Channel. I don't know about that, but I can promise you it will at least be edible. All right. That's the spirit. Ah. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay, but sometimes it's good to have the parents' perspective, because, you know, maybe the parents have also dealt with similar situations. Hmm. And maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway. What I'm trying to say is that it's good to share. Love you. Have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? Hmm. What? Never mind. 
Look, sweetie, Mr. Vega said that you haven't been participating in class and that you're not turning things in. Huh. Oh, I I'm fine. Pops, senioritis, and all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vega's class. Huh. <laughs> there are no weird mall food court shoe rules. God damn it. <laughs> Dinner planet. It's fine. He's fine. We pull up to a stoplight and I eye Amanda. She's still texting. Just, I, I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. Ugh. Uh-huh. I can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. That's frustrating. Uh, I heard Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school? Yup. Hmm. Amanda keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. What's so funny? Uh, it's, uh, I don't think you'd get it. Uh, okay. Who are you texting? Oh. Noah. Who's Noah? My friend. Does he go to your school? Hmm. Yup. Do you like Noah? Ah. What? No! Dad! Uh, I can't believe you would- Aww. Dad! I mean, jeez. Why would you- Uh, gross. Sorry. Sorry, just asking. Dad, he's just my friend! Guys and girls can be friends, he's my friend. Hmm. Okay, okay. Jeez. Uh, this is going well. Well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. She leans forward and turns up the radio. I guess that conversation is over. Amanda and I get back home and start cooking some dinner. I found this artisanal mac and cheese recipe online that I've been dying to try. Artisanal? There's two ingredients to mac and cheese. Mac and then cheese. Uh. Dead! Please try and enjoy the finer things in life. I think you, of all people, should be able to appreciate what one can do with cheese. Yeah. Uh, plus it has bacon in it. Aren't we as a society collectively over bacon? Ugh. Bacon never stopped being good, it just has a PR problem. Hmm. We get to work on the recipe, Amanda measuring things out, and handing them to me to dump into the bowl so I can feel useful. <laughs> Don't forget the bus shoes, yeah. <laughs> Amanda puts me on bacon duty, so I chop a bunch of it and toss it in a pan to get it sizzling. Huh. The key to good mac and cheese is a balance of texture and flavor pops. Not only are we going to want the fullness of the cheese and the bacon, but we also need to counterbalance it with a crunchy mouthfeel of breadcrumbs. Mouthfeel? What's a mouthfeel? You know, when you eat stuff in it, like, the texture, uh... Listen, I've been watching a lot of the Food Channel, I honestly don't know what it means, it just makes me feel sophisticated to say. No, no, I get that. Every time I watch that channel, I just feel in order. Hungry, jealous, insecure about my cooking ability, and then hungry again. <laughs> I like the mouthfeel of that sentence. Oh my god. Amanda, mouthfeel isn't just about food, it's also about words that are fun to say. <laughs> Gregarious. Oh. Lenticular. Cattywumpus. I feel like I should check on the bacon. <laughs> Tabernacle. Uh oh. <laughs> Well, all of a sudden, the bacon burst into flames. I must have not been paying attention to how hot the pan was. Fire! Fire! Oh, God! Fire! I run around in the kitchen looking for anything to put out the fire. I grab a cup of water and Amanda snatches it out of my hands. Hmm. Nope! She puts it down and calmly grabs a lid from the pantry. She places it on top of the flames and turns down the heat. I finally calm down. 
Did I almost just burn down our brand new house because I was too busy saying silly words? Indubitably. Cool. Who wants takeout? Amanda and I order some Chinese food and eat it on the couch of our new living room. She flips on the TV. Huh. Oh, cool! Long Hell Ice Road Paranormal Ghost Truckers is on! Your favorite, right? Oh, hell yes. They have to make it over the Canadian tundra before the ice road melts, but they're also hunting ghosts. Huh. Also, the trucks are haunted. This is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Callum and Flint Dogbone, the twin brother truck driving and ghost hunting duo, find themselves in the greatest per their greatest peril yet. Oh no! The ghosts done got control of the truck! I can't steer on them here, there. The mice were damp. Oh my god. I can't steer on them there damn ice roads. Let me use this EVP meter to try and communicate with the spirits. Flynn, we're about to die! Ah, uh, almost got it. If you listen carefully, it sounds like it's saying you're gonna die. That's mm. because ah, we're about to die, huh. you! This is art. <laughs> yes, Canadian trucks get haunted if you wear the wrong shoes in them, yes. <laughs> the episode ends and Amanda excuses herself to go and start arguments on the internet. I stay up a little longer, curious about the exploits of Callum and Flint Dogbone after their disastrous ice road incident. Afterward, I crawl into bed and get a good night's sleep. Okay. I think this is actually a good place... ...to save. And, uh... That- that's stream. Um, yeah. Good, good stream, everyone. Actually, wait, I was gonna go raid Great Newtons, but I, he's not, like, online yet. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Whoops, indeed. It's okay. It's okay. We still have to quit the game and do it an exit. <laughs> Uh, he's playing Mega Man Legends? What? Mega Man X Legends? I don't- it's one of those games. Uh, we just saved, so let's go back to the title screen. Okay. Very good. I love this title screen, it's very good. <laughs> okay.